Uh, welcome to the second edition of the Racing for Recovery podcast. I have Tiffany Howell on today. How are you? Great. Um, I'm wearing a Motley Crue shirt. So what is your favorite Motley Crue song? Do you even know who this band is? I know who they are because of my mom, but I do oh, not God. listen to them. <laughs> that means I'm old. All right. We're starting off on a good foot. Okay. Um, what did you think of the support group meeting last night in that topic? How did that topic of love hit you? Um, it did not hit me well, and that's why I had to leave. Oh, we, we're going to keep talking about this why why what was up with because I had never I'd never talked about that before so I I'm with you on I felt oh my god what am I doing here um why did that hit you that hard I think it hit me hard the main thing um is I don't really I've never been shown the love that I think that I deserve but I'm always the one giving it and not receiving it um, and what my mind automatically went to was my sister and my kids. And I just, and then like hearing everybody's family there and talking and like, I, I just couldn't do it because I don't have that. Do you know you're going to get it? I will. Yeah. I know it. It's interesting, Tiffany. I wrote the word, um, adversity on here because at some point I was going to ask you, you know, like what you've overcome and I, in my mind, I already know there's a ton of stuff, but us talking about this right off the bat, do you see how this, an, this is an adverse event, but what what is the positivity that's coming out of it? Out of? Like, like even that, that word, that conversation last night, um, how you described your sister and your kids. I mean, this is a hard, this is sobriety. You know what? I mean, people watching this or in society, they think, oh, sobriety is I'm not drunk anymore. That's, That's not, not it. <laughs> this is what sobriety is. Yeah. So are you at a state now, even though this is hard for you, that you you know it's getting better? Oh, yeah. I pull myself together every day and continue to fight. And I know that it's I, I just know everything's going to work out. So I can't sit there and like wallow and like be sad and hate everything. Like I have to live each day the best that I can, that I want to. Like I wake up and I decide how I'm gonna live my day and I mean, I just wanna be happy and like give that love that everybody deserves. And um, I just keep pushing and fighting. You deserve it too, right? Yeah. So why, why do you think I'm having you on here today? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I want you to answer that though. Why, why do you think? <clears throat> Um, because of the amount of growth that I've shown and the change and, um, the amount of love that I have for myself now. Yes. All of that. And taking all of that, I want people to see this who are going to relate to what you've been through What I don't even know how much you're going to talk about all that stuff, but even what we're doing right now is powerful. Yeah. And I want some other girl in your shoes to see this and go, wow, if she can do this, I'm calling racing for recovery because I want to get some of what she has. And right. that to me is the definition of the L word. Yeah. It's or love, whatever. God, I still have a hard time saying that too. But yeah. um okay. I'm gonna sorry I'm sticking to the hard stuff for a minute. I was gonna <laughs> okay. start with this, but how did why did you even end up here? Um, honestly, <laughs> I ended up here because of the amount of freedom that I heard about mm -hmm. and having that and still not knowing how to love myself or value myself and still hanging out with people who were unhealthy for me led me down. Um, it led me to make a bad choice, but then again, that choice led me to be the person that I am today. Mm -hmm and learn how to love and value myself and surround myself with positive goal oriented people, not people who are stuck in the still um, method, like just stuck, you know. Um, I surround myself with people 
who, like I said, have goals and who are passionate about life and happy and, you know, who want the same things, who are going down the same road that I'm going down. And if they're not going down that road and they're going off this way or that way, I can't, I can't be around it. I I can't. That's good. Yeah. That's self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Where did, where did drugs start to play a role in your life and why did you choose them? What was, <clears throat> well, what was going on? My first hit of crack was when I was 10, 11 ish with my uncle who's no longer here. And then like from there, it kind of just progressed. And then, um, yeah. What did drugs do to you? What did they take away? They took away um, my youth, <laughs> um, my self-esteem, my co I mean, everything. I didn't even know what any of that was. Like I just, I was always running and doing drugs and hanging out with the wrong people. And I just, um, I didn't want to feel the neglect that I felt from my biological father leaving and um, being forced into certain things in my life. And that led to like more drug use and I didn't know how to cope with any of that. Like I, I don't, I've always played the victim role. Like, but I, I got out of that finally. Like I'm not a victim anymore and I need to stop living like I'm a victim because I'm a survivor from everything that go. I've been through. Yep. So I just need to keep pushing forward. Um. Wow, it's rare I'm stuck for words. <laughs> uh, so tell me like, okay, you mentioned coming in here for freedom. Yeah. What has racing for recovery shown you that has allowed you to feel free um they've shown me how to have like a sense of purpose um that i'm loved i'm accepted mm -hmm. and that you know it's okay to be yourself um the person i am today i didn't know existed i had no idea um but i'm taught to like all the support that i have here i've never really had like I can just come here and I feel like I'm at home and people accept me and my weirdness and mm -hmm. like everything that I have to offer like people like gravitate to it I don't know I just yeah I just want to give back and give back like everything that was so freely given to me like mm -hmm. I want to show people like you can get it too absolutely so you mentioned giving back um have you have you connected with that that young girl from the speaking engagement I did, and her, how to talk about that. That went really good. Um, she's never met anyone who's been in that, been involved in that. Yeah. And it broke my heart because she's like 16. Yeah. She got involved in it when she was like 14, I think. Um, and like we just cried on the phone together. And I was supposed to meet up with her in December, but that never happened. I don't know. I don't know if she's ready or not, so I don't want to like push it. What was it like talking? How did she help you in your own healing just by talking to her the way you did? Just knowing that there was another young woman who's been through it and has pushed through it and thrived, yeah. um, it helped me a lot. Like I don't open up too much about it, um, but knowing that there are other people that have been through it, it helps a tremendous amount. Well, and you said earlier, you're a survivor and yeah. that's the message, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's talk about when you first came into IOP and I think it, I brought up the topic of music that day and <sighs> you, who was the band that you said you wanted to see? Tash Sultana? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the, and then we got you tickets to go to that concert that night, right? Um, I want you to talk about what it was like to, I guess, A, be acknowledged that we heard you and that B, we're like, okay, you're going. Tell me about that that, and being at the show and then maybe how you could have handled that better. And then I'm going to come back to more positivity <laughs> after that because it's a valuable – well, and the, go ahead, answer that. And I have a point. Okay. Yeah. Um, music is 
a huge part of my life. Mm -hmm. And if I was anywhere else, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do that. What you did for me, they Mm -hmm. wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I feel that I shouldn't have went. Um, Why? Because of what I did prior to that. Um, I'm like her music, like what it does to me is insane. And I've never been so grateful for somebody just, hey, you're going like take off, go, go, go. Even though I didn't think my car was going to make it, it made it. And I loved every minute of it. That's why you should have gone. Yeah. That's why we had you go. I loved it. What did it, when, um, when it didn't go as well as it should have or whatever, right? What did, or how do you think we handled that with you? Like we, you know, I'm trying, I don't want to put your stuff out there Just, or whatever. It's okay. Well, you, you can say that, but you, you could have handled that experience better than you did. Mm-hmm. And then once you realize that we found out about that, how do you think we handled that for for you? I think that you guys handled it appropriately. Is yeah. that, okay. Yeah. And like being able to openly talk to like you or Todd Bieber about it, like that helped too because he made it known like that he sees – A lot, everyone here sees more in me than, you know, I saw in myself at the time. So to get that chance, like really open, like that opened my eyes and changed my entire mindset when that happened. That's exactly why I'm having this conversation Mm -hmm. with you and why we did that. Cause it's, and it goes back to the topic of the support group meeting last night. We see the value in you guys before you can see it yourself. Yeah. I understand that. And that's why, you know, maybe that, that show didn't go as well as it could have, mm-hmm. but we took that whole thing and turned it into, look what you are today. Right. And that's that's why it all worked out, yeah. right? But don't do it again. I won't. <laughs> I won't. Uh, nope. Um, so I want to know, and I want people to understand, what's the process of your awesomeness these past, what is it, 10 months now that you have? 11? Eight, almost nine. Okay, yeah. nine, whatever. Close You're going to have 10 and 11, <laughs> whatever. So what what has that growth been like? What did you do? What did you learn? What would you say to someone else who's just starting? Talk um, about your journey. I really dug deep, and I was sick of my own shit. Um, sorry. It's all right. But you have, to, you have to want it. You have to. And if you don't, you're never – you're just – you're not going to get it. Mm-hmm. And discovering who you are as a person and who you're meant to be is like you ha- you just have to dig deep. You have to. If you if you don't put the work in, you're not going to get the results. So when, when you started working at this, what was it like to start having some success in it? How did you feel? I felt amazing. Better than I have in years. Was it starting to give you a sense of you're okay, you're mm-hmm. of value? Yeah. So what? Give me, give me an idea of like what's the hardest thing you've been that you've had to overcome in sobriety. My sister keeping my kids from me. That's been the hardest thing. Everything else I can get through and I push through and I'm okay, but when it comes to that and stuff being done to me that was told that wasn't going to be done to me and not okay with that. Do you feel like you've been, that that could have been handled better? Talk about what, I guess what your wish list would be with your sister and your kids, like how you would have handled it, what you think she should do. Um, Well, let's just say if the tables were turned, I wouldn't keep her kids from her. Um, And I would be there throughout her change and everything that she's going through and support her, um, I wouldn't be sneaky. I wouldn't be conniving. I wouldn't. I mean, you're there to help me, and you haven't really. Like, you've stabbed me in the back more than supporting me like you should have done and like you said that you would have done. It's a very sensitive subject. What Are you, is there a process you're now involved with to get them back? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Do you have an, is there a? 
an end date? I mean, can you see something in this that's coming to a close for you where Very you get soon. them back? Okay, yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about something else. Yeah. What um what have you been doing that's been fun in recovery? Where have you gone? The friends you've met, the things you've done. What's been cool about being at Racing for Recovery? Um, everybody that I've met here has become a friend to me. Uh, meeting new people and just being my authentic self and making them laugh and happy and like people tell me I'm their favorite person to be around here mm-hmm. and that means so much to me because I've never been that person. Mm -hmm. Um, But being able to just hang out with people and have that support and work and listen to music and hang out with Megan, Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's huge to me. Like I have a hard time getting close to people because I get attached and from getting close to people and um like they always leave anyway so it's just it's hard so when i actually do get close to people i cherish that and i've learned to not have expectations what's it like to have people stay now um it's different it's different you want to expand on that like different different how (laughs) different good it's yeah very it's it's a good different um i feel like i'm actually wanted in people's lives and not just around for people's sick needs Mm -hmm. yep uh you're working on your education right now yes how's that going great (laughs) (laughs) well it is right yeah no um I've so I just have my math left to do on my GD, but I just took it like a few weeks ago and missed it by two points. So now I have to wait until March 14th and I'm getting it that time. Yes, you are. Yeah. Is that something like pursuing your GED? Is that something you ever even thought you would do? No, 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 that's great. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do with it? Um, anything I want to. <laughs> I want to, um, I mean, like I've talked to people here. I want to um, get my CDCA and I want to be able to give back here to the place that helped me so much. Mm -hmm. I want to give back to the people that come in here. Do you have to have the GED first? I don't know. I don't know. Megan, do you have to have that? Yeah. How do you know? (laughs) All right. No, you'll get it. Yeah. 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 What do you want to do with us? What do you mean? If you could start here today, what would you, what's your ideal job with us? Um, shoot, I don't even know what kind of jobs I could do here, but you can I bet have you mine. I can do them all. Okay. Right. Let's do it. You can switch roles yeah, and interview that's people. Great. Right. Yeah. It's a piece of cake. <laughs> yeah. Talk about love all day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you have any, like, seriously, do you have any idea, like, if there's a, a population or people have had certain experiences is there something that really interests you right off the bat here yeah um just i don't know what role it would be but maybe like a counselor Mm -hmm. where i can actually share my stories and give the feedback and really help someone get through anything hard that they are going through Mm -hmm. i still i do that to this day because I've been through a lot that, you know, that these new people have been Mm -hmm. through. So Mm -hmm. I'm even without the title of working here, like I'm still trying to give back and, you know, giving the advice and like, I've been here, like not telling them what to do, but like trying to coach them. Like I've been through this, this is what I've done. So hopefully that helps them. What's, what's it like to, see somebody come in and they don't necessarily do, I don't want to say the right thing, do what would really help them and watch them fall and lose opportunities. What's it like seeing it from a different perspective now? It makes me sad. Um, It hurts me. It hurts my little heart here (laughs) Um, because I was there once and I know like the pain that that person is feeling um 
it just it sucks i wish everybody would get it um unfortunately not everybody does but i i just the the little bit of magic that i have in me now like i want to be able to just like give it to everybody and the happiness and like everything that i feel now i just want to give it away what do you think it is that people quote as you said get it what what is that I mean, what happens when somebody starts to get it? Um, they are able to set boundaries, healthy mm. boundaries with people, um, love their self, value mm. their self. Um, confidence is huge. Self-esteem. Um, know that they can do anything with sobriety. That's right. Anything is possible. What right? a slogan, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 How are you giving, how are you showing examples of that now? Specifically, how do you like yourself today? Well, um, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> when I, I like the girl you, if picture me being the girl you talked to on the phone and she said, Tiffany, I don't, I don't like myself. What's it like to actually like who you are today? How do you answer her? Um, well, we can start off with there's no like there's no limit with me now mm -hmm. um <laughs> i'm able and willing and i'm very determined to do to do um anything that i set my mind to now mm -hmm. i've never been so determined and motivated in my life honestly mm -hmm. um i push myself i if there's something hard that I'm going through, like I have the amount of support that I have now, I just call them, I come up here. I mean, there's different steps that I take now when I am going through something that's difficult. Uh, I might shut down for a day, but then like I'm I'm on it. Like if it, it, if it hinders my um, recovery or mood or anything, like I have to figure out a way to just get through it and change it. And how was that? different from when you used to face adversity like what would you do to handle it then nothing probably get high right. and numb it and yeah. just throw it away like it didn't exist but then when i'm not high it all comes back yeah. that's the worse thing, right <laughs> and that's when i think of like how do you like yourself now it's a, it starts with not hurting yourself right. anymore which you've been doing a great job at right yeah What's working been doing for you? How does it feel to be like gainfully employed? It feels great. And yeah. everyone that I work with, I love. Like I can be myself and people love it. What are your What are your plans for the future for, um, like are you going to stay with us? Are you going to go buy your own castle somewhere? <laughs> what are you going to do? I mean, the castle does sound pretty good. Right, right. <laughs> um, I'm definitely staying with you guys. Um, you guys have helped mold me into someone that I never knew existed. And um, I'm staying. Good. Regardless. Um, I'll give you a break. Do you want to ask me anything right now? I've been grilling you pretty hard. <laughs> um, I don't know. Think of something. Like, what is it? Something like that? I mean, since you've been here that you want to know about racing for recovery that you don't or something i think i know everything pretty much i mean not every okay i shouldn't have said that but no. <laughs> when it comes to like racing for recovery and you and like the staff and stuff like i've grown very very close to mm -hmm. so i don't really think i have like any questions for you well, you're making my job harder now because i gotta <laughs> think of more questions then what what's it like to have a I don't like saying staff, but the people who are fortunate to work here, if you will. I mean, what's it what's it like to have people that actually, you know, care about your well being? It's it's something I'm not used to. I mean, I've been to a couple other places and none of them even compare to this place. Why not? Why do you think that is? Because they're there to get a paycheck. They don't, I feel, um, they don't really care about having that relationship with the um, clients. And do, yeah. Do you think like the treatment in general, do, that now that you've been with us and how we do things, do you, is it 
different than the, well, I know it's different, oh, but yeah. is it, what, what is different that we do that you haven't received at different places? Um, so like the other place, the other places would do like packets and kind of like just go over everything people already know, but here, like they actually dig deep into like issues as to like what's going on within you and if there are any issues with like family and stuff like they're you guys are quick to bring the family in and talk mm -hmm. about it and work through it and like family oriented here too like that's huge um not uh, nowhere else does that they're they don't give you the freedom and they don't let you live like a normal human being mm -hmm. they want to lock you down and who you don't do that when you mentioned earlier, and it's relatable to what you're saying right now, when you mentioned earlier that you started smoking crack at 10, I mean, it's like, even I, I hear that and I'm like, oh my God. And do you think not ever getting any help from why you were doing that is why that continued for so long? I mean, did anybody like ever try and talk to you about what, what is going on here to help you with this? Not really. And is that what's made it different for us? That's what we've been, that's what we do. Yeah. And, and again, the success that you have with this, to me, it's like, it's not rocket science. It's somebody that's doing that at 10. There's a problem. All right. What's the problem? Right. It's not the crack. It's what's behind the crack. And then helping with that to have you be where you are today. Yeah. Right? Um, Megan, what should I ask her? <laughs> What do you want to ask her? Nobody can even see her right now. But she's been on before. Look at Megan Kelly's success story. It's good. What should I ask her? Um, ask her how <laughs> she We kind of talked about this before, but we hire you today. And I'm like, okay, Tiffany, you start on Monday. And Monday you come in and I'm like, you have a group of 10 girls who have been in exactly your same shoes. How do you facilitate that IOP group that you've been sitting in with us doing it for so long? What do you do on the first day? Explain to them. Uh, well, like they've been through what I've talked to you about. It, yeah, it's 10 versions of you. And they're all sitting there looking at you. And now you have the, the opportunity to totally flip the script and help little Tiffany's. Mm -hmm. What do you do? let them know that it's not their fault and that they, um, they're better than what they have been through and to not let it control their life. So when I was forced, okay. So I was, when I moved to California, I was, um, a very troubled teen and my mother, sent me to a group home in California and I willingly ran away with someone but then was forced into like the human trafficking thing um in California <laughs> um it's just crazy to think of because the people who do that to like these young girls like myself and like what it does in here, like I've gotten through it and I've moved past it, but still to this day, like there are like people and things and places that I don't even go to because a lot of women and teens or whatever, they think that they're invincible and nothing like that will ever happen to them, but it can, it happened to me. It can happen to anyone. And I wish like I could just give that message out to them. Like, this is what you need to watch out for. People to stay away from, like whatever. Like if I could just share that with teens and like women, like what I've been through and kind of like help them through that. Like, I don't know exactly what I would say, but I would definitely share my story and what I went through that was so traumatizing during that time. 
Like just to even like think of like it, I don't know how I'm here at all. I don't. You know you're doing that right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what. Good job, Megan. Because yeah, I again, Tiffany. I'm. I don't. This is hard because I don't. I don't want to hurt you in any of this, you know. But it's like I keep thinking as I'm looking at your your little face over there. I'm thinking of how <laughs> you know when people see this. That that you're already helping them right now. You're doing everything what you want to do, right? And somebody's going to see this, and it's going to help them. And that's the whole point of everything that Racing for Recovery has been built on, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like you said earlier. You're a survivor of this stuff. <laughs> um, <clears throat> where's a place in the world you've never been that you want to go, and why? There's this one place, and I can't think of it right now. But it has like this big castle and like water slides. Um, Disneyland? No. <laughs> no, I'll have to think of it. I can't. Atlantis. I don't know where that is. It just looks very peaceful and fun and calm and great. Awesome. <laughs> I don't know. It just looks like uh, like a little paradise that I want to go to and just relax and get away from whatever. Just not have a care and just enjoy my time and not have my phone, it really. I mean, I need to take pictures, but other than that, like. When you get your kids back, mm -hmm. how is everything you've gone through and what you've learned, how is going to make you an, an even better, awesome mom than you already are? I'm going to let my kids, like, be kids. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah, discipline is needed, but be your, be yourself. And I'm going to show them the love, the love that I have inside of me, I'm going to give to them so they know what it's like to be loved and cared for. Um, I don't think they're getting that right now in uh, the ways that they should. So being able to get them back and show them really what it's about, I can't wait. What's the most important message you want to teach them? Um. I don't know why we keep getting back to this word, but loving yourself yeah. and knowing that they are of worth and they always will be. I'm good. Do you want to keep going? Do you get, you want to ask me anything? You don't? I'm good. <laughs> what, do you want to say anything else? Cause I think you just ended that on it. We circled the whole thing back. We did. Um, are you less afraid of that word now that we've been talking about it for a while that neither one of us can really say? Um, I mean, I'm not less scared of it, but I don't know. I it's just a it's a, it's just a hard subject to even talk about. If it comes up in another meeting like last night, will you get up and walk out next time or will you stay? Probably stay. Good. That's progress. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Until next time, <laughs> Racing for Recovery people, um, check us out on the YouTube page and our website. And if you need help, if you have endured anything that Tiffany unfortunately has, call us and she'll be able to talk to you. Thanks for watching.